Hey guys, my name is Lolly Flex and I am back with Benedict and we are here for another gemstone video. Today we're going to be covering opals. We're going to cover everything from, you know, what creates the color plan in an opal, the different qualities, imitations, price points, and there's like such a wide range in the family of yeah. opals. So it's a, it's a big topic. Yeah, so buckle up and the timestamps <laughs> are down below. So yeah, we'll start with just the basics of opals. It's a birdstone of October. But yeah, so opals, they're like super mysterious. They have like this crazy color play. Yeah. This is an example of rough opal yeah. um, that we found in a mine because we visited the mine, the black opal mm -hmm. mines and the boulder opal mines. And like, I'm just trying to imagine like the first person to discover them probably yeah. like kicked in that rock and then like, ooh, this is like well, a I magical. Mean, yeah, but just looking at this, like we see it usually faceted, you know, small yeah. like this, but could you imagine this like a little bit everywhere? Yeah, it's pretty. So that's impressive. how they, these yeah. are like the boulder opals. So then they slice them, mm -hmm. they keep the matrix, and they slice because it's not yeah. veins or nodules like the black opals would be found. But still, it's it's a pretty impressive uh, stone. Hardness of five point five. Yeah. 6.5, yeah. It's not very hard, and to me, it, like we know, like pearls, opals, they're more fragile. There's, they're more, they're, they're softer. But it's also mostly the treatments and the quality of the opal, because a high quality opal, uh, you can have it on a ring. You can have it in the winter outside. Like mm -hmm. people kind of, they tend to be like very scared about opal because they see it like a very fragile or soft stone, but. Mm -hmm. It's all about the quality of an opal, so a good quality opal, and they're not necessarily super, super expensive, but it's still mm -hmm. pretty durable for pendants, for earrings, uh, for a rain you'll wear yeah. once in a while, or that's well yeah. protected. And you can always just set it in a bezel. That's really going to help encase the stone, protect it from like everyday wear and tear. Like there's, there's a lot of different things that like as us jewelers we can kind of play around to make it more wearable. And that's why they're yeah. most of the time cut as a cabochon, because a lot of optical phenomenon you have to cut them at, as yeah. cabochon to show the color play, but opal, you could facet them. It, it doesn't need a smooth mm -hmm. surface to show the color play, but the reason why it's smooth, it's so there's no like meat, meat points or like lines or, or corners or anything mm -hmm. like that. So and it's you, just Well, more... even just having the facets will kind of muddy the appearance of a beautiful color play. Yeah. You're not going to see it as clearly. So in having that beautiful cabochon, it's really you're going to look into like one big window. In fact, yes. opal is not a crystal. Okay. So most gemstones, these tourmaline, quartz, they're all crystals. So they have mm -hmm. like a crystalline system, s specific axis, a symmetry. Opals are French we say amorph, so like amorphous. So they're not crystal, they're not perfectly arranged. The atoms are not organized like they would in, in crystals. What they are, it's little spheres of silica that form and that kind of like gets deposited over yeah. in like a three dimension. And then how they are arranged, you'll see either little pinpoints of color or like a, a big patch, like kind of like a paintbrush mm -hmm. stroke. And these are the different patterns that we can see and we'll see some examples. Basically all of these little beads, the smaller it is, the less light passes through, creating a shorter wavelength. So yeah. then you're gonna see those blue colors. And then the bigger they are, like the rarer it is, the, that's when you're going to see that's like a it. longer wavelength. Because like it breaks. takes more time to create yeah. this bigger ball. So the color red is a lot mm -hmm. more rare than the mm -hmm. smaller ones. Yeah. Have, most opals are known for the color play, but you'll also have common opal. So as soon as there's color play, we call mm -hmm. them precious opal. And when there's no color play, it's common opal. Actually, Mexican or fire opal can have color play, so they're not common. But the pink one and the blue ones, it's really, it looks like a chalcedony. It's just a very light. That's one way to kind of tell them. Mm -hmm. You saw this one earlier and you said, well, it looks much bigger than 3.7 carat. Because uh, it's huge. It's a, yeah. big, like, it's a big stone. This yeah. would be like a 10 carat sapphire yeah. if it was a sapphire. We'll start with the, the rarest. Black opals are the most expensive. They can fetch 
crazy, crazy, crazy primes. Yeah. Well, well, I've seen some that are like like this, quite small. Fetching price is like fifteen thousand. Oh yeah. Because they have like beautiful patterns on yeah. top. So yeah, black opal. The the base or like the color mm -hmm. body can vary dark gray to black and it's going to be so full uh, opal all around it's mostly going to come from australia there are some that have like a dark body from ethiopia but it's not what we mostly see on mm -hmm. the market so as soon as you have red it's got like a, it's going to be like at three times the price premium mm -hmm. as if it was just blue and green and maybe some yellow but as soon as you get yellow orange red the price just mm -hmm. jumps uh, because the, the the ones that take the longest to form and that's it so there's less of them so within the black opals there's similar colors so you have the little pinpoints specks of color yeah. so this is the less desirable or like the the most common and then you have like strokes like a harlequin mm -hmm. and it's gonna be like patch yeah. it's really gonna look like the the clown the mm -hmm. <laughs> the dress or the, the outfit and this is very expensive yeah. there's one that looks like um chinese writing um, like wines so that would be chinese writing there's like rolling um ribbon i think they <laughs> they come up with all these type of names but ultimately if you have big flashes or big patch mm -hmm. that's what's gonna it's gonna be more than little specks and then if you have red and orange that's gonna be a lot more than just blue and green mm -hmm. and the other thing is kind of like the the brilliance or the intensity like we have some this one has mm -hmm. color play of blue and green and then this one has really and this one flashes. this one is like harlequin and yeah. it's got orange it's got red this one yeah. is the nicest and yeah. it's that well i mean if you're if you're getting an opal that's kind of what you're going for you want yeah. those nice colors yeah white opals i would recommend also australian origin mm -hmm. um just because they're more durable and also like ethiopian opal a lot of people's theirs will go yellow yeah. over time. When you're like Ethiopian opals, you'll buy them in water. Like mm -hmm. they're in buckets of water. They just water them because as soon as it comes out, after a month or two, it can change color, it can crack, crazy. It can yeah. mm -hmm. Like I was always told that you have to buy from a vendor who knows that their stones have been three years or older because otherwise it can just turn yellow. Yeah. And I, I, if that's what you like, that's what you like. But if I had a big, beautiful white opal, I wouldn't want it to turn yellow. Cool. They can vary also the color. It's the same color flash, it's the same principle of light mm -hmm. diffracting. But since it's on a white base, it's a bit more soft. It's less dramatic yeah. as the black opal. Well, this white opal is also crystalline opal. And that's it. There's also crystalline opal. It's kind of like a beautiful, kind of white, translucent, glowing stone. Yeah. Which I find really pretty. It's a lot cheaper. I'd say these are approximately yeah, 11 by 9 and 12 by 8. But these one are 700 and this one is 4,000. They're To me, they're more pastel. They're more everyday. Black opal are more of a statement. Yeah, spray. well, I feel like it's really niche. You yeah. love it or you don't. The people who yeah. buy black opal love black opal. I think it's like an everyday versus this is like... Opal is commonly used in like women's jewelry. Yeah, black opals. It's often collectors or people mm -hmm. who kind of know about it. They've done research. Open sometimes to the shape because when you yeah. cut, you want to keep as as much material. Um, yeah. Since it's kind of fragile, you don't want super thin. That's one thing. So I I made an engagement ring with opal for a client and. You really need to make sure that your opal is thick enough to set because if not, if it's too thin, which I've seen, some opals are like paper thin. Yeah. And then in the setting process, it can crack or even just from everyday wear, you can easily damage your yeah. opal. Then we have boulder. So boulder to me is a great option for people who want like a big mm -hmm. statement, like necklace or brooch, little earrings, because they're much bigger, 
they're more affordable like this and this is gonna be the same price it's just that there's the, um, the whole straw yeah. behind so it's iron stone they're gonna be sold by piece this is not a stone that is sold for carrot even when you go to Australia or in shows they're really cool and it kind of allows bigger pieces like some are really not expensive like mm -hmm. this is 130 these are more in like the three four thousand dollars each but again it's different colors it's different mm -hmm. flash it's different intensity and since they have the post rock the fact that it's very thin it doesn't really matter because it's kind of like a natural doublet yeah it's gonna add a lot of durability yeah. and that's how they are found that's boulder opals and then after the boulder opals there's even thinner <laughs> the slice and it's matrix opal yeah. mm -hmm. so you have like all these tiny tiny little nodules or like veins so pretty it's very pretty it's like a yeah. magical egg or... <laughs> it literally looks like, <laughs> yeah, it looks like a dinosaur yeah, yeah. So mexican fire opal mm -hmm. uh, so it comes from like an orangey there's some more yellow to almost red. They're usually translucent, transparent, and then some of them have color play. Yeah, I've seen it. Beautiful. Yeah. It's really nice. I think a lot of them might have color play that we just don't see because of the bright body color. Mm -hmm. Like if there's orange flashes or, or yellow flashes, we don't see it. And, and usually I've seen more orange and red than blue flashes in, in mm -hmm. fire opal. Interesting. Well, because like, well, I see what your, your point is, is that like this has already a lot of fire yeah. in it, so it would be hard to distinguish. Finding a very orange stone like this, the only other option is almost like sparsetite, which yeah. is like a little bit more of like yeah. a tangerine orange, but like a dark, yeah. deep like, like a this. Fence, uh, this is, I find, so unique. Yeah. It doesn't shine or like it doesn't mm -hmm. have the luster of a spessartine, so it's maybe more subdued. Subdued, yeah. And then common opal. Common opal has no color play. This one's from Peru. There's also blue one, kind of mm -hmm. like robin egg. Kind of like an aquamarine neon yeah. green color. Yeah. A bit turquoise. Yeah, or turquoise. Yeah. Neon turquoise. turquoise. Yeah. Turquoise. yeah. yeah. Uh, it's really nice, and it's mm -hmm. that's it. If you wave it, it's very it's so funny. Okay. It's really weird. It, it feels, feels like, like plastic. Plastic, yeah. yeah. And like I've seen a lot of Brazilian jewelry with a Peruvian, yeah, the neon green in like a very saturated yellow gold. I think it's really, yeah. really pretty. Yeah. And I think Brazil also has some of those fire mm -hmm. opal, and I think they have. It's kind of like crystal. And it's got the color play, but it's very subtle. Like the color play are kind of like it's very transparent, mm -hmm. and if you just look at it without the black base, you don't really see the color play. The prices, yes, we're gonna go over some of the prices for the different types. Hi everyone, I just wanted to do a little side note. We did break the video down into two segments, so we're doing prices, qualities up front. In the second video we're going to be launching in a few days from now it's going to be why do opals turn yellow we're going to teach you how to take care of your opal jewelry you know some of you do have engagement rings with opals so that's going to be really good you know know-how then we're going to be going over like origins treatments some of the synthetics and the imitations that we are seeing so do hop on over if you are interested in that and of course as always you know if you are looking to create a custom engagement ring or if you want any of the gemstones that you see in the video we do source high quality natural gemstones so my links are down below. Enjoy! So let's start with the cheapest or the most expensive? Cheapest. We can wait. Cheapest would be Boulder Matrix. This is a Matrix Opal. This goes for 300 You've got a decent amount of the Matrix and then the little dinosaur egg was 250 mm -hmm. So it's smaller but more fun. So yeah. it's worth more, more, more money. And then we have other, this one, 170. You see there's like a kind of like a dull patch. This is more, I feel, for like artists or like yeah. landscape collections. And then you have like very bright 
blue yep. little color plate, but the color is pretty nice. These are 130, 150 each. And for the bigger boulder, these are in the $4,000 range, are 1500 it's a lot smaller, but kind of similar quality here, similar pattern. I mean, this one's quite beautiful. This one's quite smaller. beautiful. It's yeah. much smaller and it's got this like dead hole in mm -hmm. the middle. And then this is also 3500 This one's actually got quite a, a, good thing, a good thickness, yeah. a good cap. And white opal, 8mm round, 11 by 9 millimeter round. We're in the 500 to $700 each. That's 380 per carat if we have reference to carrot mm -hmm. price in other videos, so you can compare. Bigger, um, around $1,000 each for the 15 by 10, it's only 2.6 carat. These are five millimeter each, these are 150 each, mm -hmm. because these ones have a lot more color play. Yeah. Fire opal, I would say similar price range, mm -hmm. like price per carat as white opals. This is $1,400 for the stone. Carrots, big, this is fifteen hundred, and this one is one thousand. I mean, they're very reasonably priced for a very large stone. And then black opals. Mm -hmm. So this one is two thousand. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of color. It's quite small. The colors are bright, but the color play are not as big or powerful as this last one. This one is thirty four hundred. Mm -hmm. It's a lot larger, strokes are bigger, and then this one, it's the smallest one, but this one goes for 4000 Just because of the, there's purple, there's pink. It's very beautiful, yeah. And it's throughout the entire stone as well. Yeah. Right, you're seeing really like red flashes all over it. And these are more in the $5,000, $6,000. This one was the one with the little harlequin mm -hmm. pattern. And this one also has some like orange on the sides. Between like 2000 to 6000 you have like a really nice piece. If you want to go bigger or like more like higher cabochon, that's going to add weight. But you can find something for like under than five thousand dollar that makes a lot of sense and then for like real collector piece if you have like you know you want the red flashes you want the specific pattern you want mm -hmm. a nicely dome and a lot of intensity that can go for maybe like a 10 by 8 millimeter 12 15 000. All right, thank you so much, Benedict. Uh, if ever you guys have any questions, comments, you can always put them down below. If you are looking to source an opal, you can always just send me an email. Again, my links are there as well. And of course, if you want more digestible formats, we do have these kind of like short little one minute breakdowns on our Instagram, on our TikTok, if it's a little bit easier for you. So thank you again, Benedict. You're welcome. And we will see you next time. Bye.